Hello everyone, in the video of today I'm gonna show you how to properly handle the exceptions. The exceptions shouldn't be feared. The exceptions are part of the application and must be included in your daily work and not in your nightmares. And I'm gonna show how to create your own exception and use it, throw it at the correct moment. First, subscribe to my channel and let's go with the exceptions. First of all, why do I need to create my own exception? In all kinds of applications, errors may occur. We are not perfect. But some of them can be controlled. You have errors like the user sent wrong data, a piece of wrong data. And you tell him, hey guy, you're sending me wrong data. And there are errors like, I don't know, but this is not working. For the first one, when the users send incorrect data, you may have some if-else all over the application to detect that. Another way is removing those if-else, clean all of this and throw an exception. As you know, the user is sending incorrect data, data that can't be handled. You can stop running the application. You can return him an error message. That's a quick way to exit the running application. I mean, the application won't stop running but the user will see a response at this moment. It's request just to stop it running. You don't have to care about the returned value. The returned value will be the exception itself. Okay, let's see it. Let's create an exception and see it by examples. There are two types of exceptions, the common exception and the runtime exception. The difference is that the common exception must always be catched, surrounded by a try catch or declared in the method. And the runtime exception is more silent. You don't need to surround it with a try catch. A common exception is the IO exception when reading a file. The compiler is always asking you to surround the get input stream with a try catch. And a runtime exception is the null pointer exception. This one is more mean. It's more subtle. You don't see it coming. So if you want to create your own exception, the best option is the runtime exception. Not because you are as mean as the null pointer exception, but because this time you control the exception. You control where the exception will be thrown. I will just use the message for the moment, but we will add more fields later. And let's use this exception where there is a problem in the application. When the user requests some incorrect data, like when he's sending an incorrect password, searching for a non-existent user, or creating an already existing user. Here, the user is searching for a non-existent user. So I will throw my own exception. In this case, is the password, which is incorrect. And here we have an incorrect token when authenticating. In this place, like before, it's searching for a non-existing user. Here is trying to create an already existing user. And this last one is looking for a non-existing user again. Okay, but this doesn't change from before. Be patient. Let's see what returns the application if I try to create a user twice.
I created it correctly. And now I will try to create it again. Do you see the result? Do you want the end users to see that? And I don't even know if the front end guys know to print that pretty. For that, I will need an advice, a control advice, a class that will surround the controllers, an aspect which will surround the controllers. I don't know if you ever heard about the AOP, the aspect oriented programming. No? Let's say it now. This way, when a controller receives an app exception, it will map it into an error DTO instead of continuing with the normal workflow. As now I control the output, I return the DTO instead of letting the raw exception. It will be prettier now. Let's see it. Better now, but let's go to the next level. Do you know the HTTP codes? The 200 are for good results. The 300 are for redirections. The 400 are for users' errors. And the 500 for system errors. When creating a duplicated user, it's a user error. It should return a 400, like that but it should be customized depending on the error. Let's modify that. And now return the correct HTTP code for each case. In this case, use the not found, I will use the not found. For the invalid password, it's a bad request. Token not found, not found again. Use the not found, not found status. Logging already exists, it's a bad request. And the last user not found. And now modify the advice. Let's try again now. This time I will add three Bs at the end to show more verbose information. The same error message and the HTTP code, but now this HTTP code 
is customized. It came from it came from here, but request, which is a 400. I think now it's getting professional, don't you think? Let's recap. I've created a custom runtime exception. Runtime because I don't want to add the try catch everywhere. I want the exception to be thrown to the user's face. I've added a field HTTP status to customize the HTTP code to return. I've created the exception handler, the aspect to handle the custom exception and return a beautiful JSON. This way, I return a custom message, not an ugly stack trace, with a custom HTTP code. And I can even add more fields, like the input parameters or more debug information. I can even hide the error with an error code, like error 42 when the password is incorrect. This made difficult to hack the application in production, because nobody but you knows what a 42 code means. I know you enjoyed, and I know you will click on the like button, and subscribe to see more videos next week. Bye!